I can't believe I finally get to work with PlayStation. They actually sent me the PlayStation Pulse Elite wireless gaming headset. So I guess I finally get to say that this video is sponsored by PlayStation. No, but honestly, I just really wanted to try these out because these have planar magnetic drivers, believe it or not. A retractable mic capable of delivering some AI enhanced noise rejection, a customizable EQ settings menu, and even up to 30 hours of battery life. Anyways, look, let me take you back to um, about a week ago when I finally decided to switch to the S24 Ultra. More on these later. this is my S24 Ultra out of all packages I have here. Um, let's find out. It's, it's not that I'm not an Apple fanboy anymore. I love the MacBook. I absolutely love MacBooks. I love iPhone. I'm waiting for my Apple Vision Pro, which should be here today. The thing is that my daily computer is Windows based um, and I don't mind going back and forth between MacBook and Windows, which is why I'm using the Zenbook still. Now, I love Android. I actually like Android a bit more than iPhone, which is why it's my daily, hence the birches. So let's open this up. Also, I'll be making an updated EDC um, because I went fully minimal. So uh, just, just bear with me, okay, and my leg. This is it. This is the phone for the next eight months. S24 Ultra in orange, baby. I also got a clear case for it, although um, I got a lot more cases that I want to try, which I already got in the mail. We'll unbox them together. And uh, um, if I remember well, I got, where is this? I guess it's on my order, but I got the extended warranty. Because last time I broke my screen, it costed four hundred dollars we're not doing that again i'm changing phones huh? i'm going back to the android so you're gonna see green God damn it. <laughs> you're gonna see green bubbles now. no yeah no we had we have a good group chat <laughs> the group just does <laughs> What you guys are thinking probably think this video is sponsored by speaking no but um this right now are a bunch of cases so if there's any case company out there that just want to send us cases feel free to send them like honestly this is really cool especially today because i'm unboxing the s24 ultra and i do not rock phones without a case you guys remember last time what happened with my screen i'm not down for that so Nice screw protector, optic protector. And I really wanted to try this one because of the wallet, but I like my muffed wallet. So um, I'm going to use the MagSafe uh, clear case. This should be good. So here's the deal. We're going to unbox this, set the whole thing up, and I'm going to Frankenstein my setup. It's going to be a bit different. It's going to be interesting. Um, let's get to it.
position is the wallet. Now, you guys see this? I'm not sure if this is gonna work out. It is not hiding the lens, or at least I don't think it's hiding the lens. I really need these wallets because it's so much easier to carry. I'm trying to carry like minimal stuff with me because of my ankle. And the last addition, I do need to find my own lanyard, but this is what it'll look like. For now, uh, I need to get the S23 Ultra and transfer my stuff with it. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use Smart Switch to transfer all my files. Um, I couldn't do that before because the other model I had, the demo model had 256 gigabytes and this one has 500 and now mine has 500. So everything is gonna transfer. I am going to take out the weekend to put up a script and a little guide on, for those who are actually transferring from iPhone to Samsung or Android. Okay, so um, Sunday, I spent some of the day working on my new S24 Ultra. I, of course, went ahead and finished the setup, transferred all my stuff via smart switch from my old S23 Ultra, and spent the rest of the day doing some research, making sure I didn't forget any of the basics I wanted to talk about to ease your transition. So today, I'm showing you guys the basics, some tips and tricks, and how you can detach yourself from the Apple ecosystem. Just finishing up my transfers. And I just finished scripting the video. It's a good video. It's all about like guiding you guys on how to transfer from iPhone to Android and talk about my experience and things like that. Uh, I feel like it'll help you guys. By the way, this is what I just got. I could have just gotten these myself, but PlayStation decided to send these through. But your boy now gets the game in peace while my girlfriend works in the other room. So these are the new PS5 Pulse Elite headset. I think what makes these special is that they are built with planar magnetic drivers. Usually you find this type of technology within high-end studio headphones. I mean, planar magnetic drivers produce detailed and accurate sound across a wide frequency range. And because the diaphragm is evenly driven across its entire surface, it allows for headphones to deliver better control over the movement of the diaphragm. So this means that they just offer a different approach to sound reproduction compared to something like dynamic drivers. And it makes the sound on the Pulse Elite headset sound really, really good. Like the movements, gun controls, the engines of any car, they sound really clear and detailed. I think what really adds to the experience is the 3D audio profile you can enable in the settings. And having a fully customizable EQ menu allows you to either tweak the bands yourself or choose from a menu of presets, all to simply deliver the most personalized audio experience in my opinion. What I like about this design is the retractable mic. It still keeps the design of the whole headset intact. It's very well designed. It has a mute button with an LED and your controller is able to mute it in case you ever need to. The overall controls of the headset are great. They all rest on the band that holds the right hand driver of the headset. You've got the power button that also acts as the pair button a headphone jack, a USB-C port to charge them, and a volume up and down button. These headsets really remind me of the look of the first iteration of the PlayStation 5. I really like the look of it and I love the little subtle details it has. The pads are super comfortable. I find the whole band hugs your head pretty well and it doesn't make your head feel sore after a while. The headset also works with other devices and not just your console. You can use its USB dongle to connect it to a Mac or a PC, connect it to your phone via Bluetooth if needed. I'd say it's a well-rounded headset in my opinion. I think the included charging station makes it even better, especially to charge. Charge and deliver up to 30 hours on one charge. That's way more than plenty. It kind of feels like my S24 Ultra. Up to now, I go almost 48 hours without having to charge it, which it's pretty cool. Anyways, I'll leave a link to these down below. I can't thank PlayStation enough for sponsoring today's video. I won't deny the fact that the Apple user experience is intuitive. Like, think about your grandparents or your parents that hate tech. It's so easy for them to just get around. It's simple, it's unique, it's right there and then. So the transition from iPhone to Samsung can sound complicated to some. The reason as to why, it's not because it's actually complicated, it's more because there's a lot more freedom and stuff you can do. For starters, if you come from iPhone and you're used to iOS swiping system, 
that's a setting I recommend enabling within your Android device. On One UI, they took it even further by allowing the swipe back gesture to be a universal gesture within your phone. So every time you want to backtrack, you can just swipe. It's not like the iPhone, which requires to hit back button sometimes, and even a swipe up to discard. The control center works the same way iPhone implements it, except this time it represents your whole entire top edge. Notifications will be found within, and the full reveal of the control center by swiping down twice. It works just like the iPhone, if not better. Long pressing some icons will allow you to enter their settings. You have full brightness control here without having to look for it within your settings. You can fully rearrange both of these panels I've just shown you, modify the icons you need and want, shut down your phone, and access the full menu settings when needed. For a snappier experience, if you really want that feel iPhone delivers in its UI, you need to enable developer options by going into software information and tapping on build number seven times. Then go to developer options and change these three animation scales to render at 0.5x speed. This makes transitions render faster and it feels like the phone is snappier. For a similar keyboard experience, I recommend using the Google Keyboard. Gboard can be downloaded within the Google Play Store and it can be enabled by swiping up, tapping these three dots, and then settings. Search for keyboard list and default and set the default keyboard to be Gboard. One setting I recommend enabling to make your integration to Android experience even better is the long press for symbols. This is a setting I wish iOS had because it just makes your typing experience a lot faster. Swipe up gestures allow you to return home. A full swipe up hold from anywhere you are shows your active apps. You can either close them by swiping up on one at a time or closing them all together with this button. To access the multitasking feature, you can also do it in here by dragging an app either up or down to split view with another app. Once you're in split view, you can tap the three dots in the middle to switch panels or favorite this view to use it in the future. Another swipe up feature is from the bottom left or right corner of the lower edge. This enables Google Assistant, which I use all the time. I actually hate Siri and Google Assistant can be used via Android Auto in the car. To search anything on your phone, including the web, you can swipe up from the middle of the screen and type whatever you need. This is very much like a global search. It just works so much better than iOS in my opinion. And here you can also store your apps in alphabetical order, which I much rather. And the home menu along your wallpapers, themes, widgets can all be customized with a single long press on the home page. To ease your transition, I just want to point out that you should enable super fast charging if it's not on. You can search for it just like I showed you and uh, you can also enable fast wireless charging, which I use every single night to be honest. Now, there is a super simple way to transfer all of your data from the iPhone to your Samsung device. All you really need to do is to download Smart Switch if you haven't done so. Then head to your iPhone settings where you will use your iCloud account to create a backup of your data. You can pick what type of data you'd like to backup in order to then transfer. It'll try its best to backup data from other apps if possible. Just please remember to make sure you turn on your iCloud backups. I do recommend you turn off Find My momentarily while you back things up. Once it's ready, you can then take your S24 Ultra, go to Accounts and Backups within your settings, and tap on the Transfer Data for Device Setup. This will open the Smart Switch app where you'll need to tap on Receive Data, select a source, and tap on Get Data from iCloud instead. Just sign in into your account by entering your credentials and entering your 2FA code, and then the app will simply search what type of data you can transfer from your iCloud to your Android phone. I recommend transferring your contacts, all your videos and photos, and as much app data as you can. If for some reason your WhatsApp data doesn't fully transfer, you can always do that within the app manually. Now, there are some things that, you know, as an iPhone user, I feel like you should know. The first one is the file system. One UI has a complete file system that truly resembles a computer and allows you to properly store, um, move and manipulate files within your phone. In fact, if you want to treat this as a computer, you can plug this into a monitor and enable Samsung DeX. 
this stuff will honestly just blow you away. I also, I don't want to confuse you guys, but just know that One UI has two different types of stores where you can download apps from the Google Play Store and the Galaxy Store. Some apps are unique to the Galaxy Store, like for example, Good Lock, Edge Touch, and Camera Assistant. I recommend looking into them in order to further unlock settings and customize your Samsung experience. Your volume rockers are far more useful than what it portrays. In fact, you can click on the three dots and control volumes for individual use cases. The very same thing can be done with your brightness bar to unlock some extra brightness. As for the notifications, notifications categories is a little trick you need to unlock within the advanced settings. In fact, notifications categories under any application allows for notifications to be broken down into so many subcategories to remove whatever you don't want to be notified about. As for the camera app, I suggest you play with it. Although to maximize its use, I recommend you follow these settings. For me, the sweet spot is shooting at 50 megapixels, but you can always alternate in this menu. Also in settings, you can enable your grid lines in order to allow you to capture better compositions. Right above it, if you are within the 12 megapixel mode, you can enable tracking autofocus to simply allow you to tap on an object and auto track it. I also think the best intelligent optimization setting for most people is medium, so try that out. In terms of advanced picture options, I like my photos to be taken in RAW as well as JPEG. As for settings to keep, these are the best settings in my opinion that will allow you to close the app and come back to the same settings. Shooting fully RAW is done within another app as well. You simply need to tap on more and tap on expert RAW. For more advanced photographers, this here is where you have full control over your camera settings. Alas, if you downloaded Camera Assistant, within your camera settings, you've just unlocked a new tier of settings you can play with. Look, there are full guides out there of like 30 to 40 minutes explaining most useful tips and tricks you can adapt into your new lifestyle. I can't really go over all of them, but what I'll do is that I'll guide you towards finding the best ones. Don't forget that unlike iOS, One UI allows you to move icons wherever you want on the screen. The phone app allows you to search the call history contacts by typing phone numbers, and the S Pen, well, it includes loads of functionalities that are worth exploring, in my opinion. Anyways, look, after switching, if you're still a Mac user and you stay a Mac user, the transition could make it more difficult depending on how attached you are to the ecosystem. You won't be able to use shared copy-paste clipboards, AirDrop will be gone, continuity camera will no longer be a thing, iMessage will no longer exist in your life, FaceTime and the integration of apps such as calendar, notes, photos will be gone. Heck, even your Apple Watch and AirTags will be a nightmare to use. If you're not really fully invested into making the transition, I personally don't recommend doing it. Like, I understand how easy it is to have all your devices connected together to have like the best productivity workflow ever. I get that. However, if you're like me and you guys just genuinely still love Apple products, but you want a bit more independence, I recommend people trying out other avenues in terms of productivity workflows. For example, myself, I use Google's ecosystem. I've never liked being tied down to one single platform and Google allows you to use its services no matter which device you're on. I'm not saying iCloud and the Apple ecosystem ties you fully down, but what I'm trying to say is that you're less dependent from the whole Apple ecosystem. For example, instead of notes, I use Google Keep in order to be able to have access to my notes on my phone or my computer. Instead of photos, I use Google Photos to be able to access all of my pictures from no matter what phone I use. I've always been a huge Google Calendar user and it now integrates with Notion quite well. As much as I hate Google Chrome, I use it a lot because it keeps my extensions, browsing history, passwords, bookmarks, no matter which device I'm using it from. The same thing can be said about Google Drive, which is my primary cloud for work and personal use. The only issue when it comes to transferring all of this data to these services it's probably the complexity it might pose on you. Like transferring all your photos to Google Photos could be rough without importing them from iCloud to your phone and then from your phone to Google Photos or transferring all your current workouts and progress to your fitness apps of choice. 
There's also many apps that iOS has that the Play Store doesn't. For the longest time, I actually couldn't use my emailing app of choice until a few months ago where it was released for Android. But eventually, I was able to adapt and just make things work for myself. Look, I don't want to make this a 30 minute long video. There's like a lot to talk about. I feel like I wanted to make this video to point you guys to the right direction. If you want to make the switch, I personally totally recommend it. But know that Android is not perfect. There is bloatware that comes with Galaxy phones that you can't even uninstall. FaceTime is such a good way to communicate with your friends and family. The Samsung watch is nowhere near as good as the Apple watch in my opinion. Most apps on iOS tend to be a bit more optimized since you'll realize the difference between the same apps in terms of UI. Samsung Pay doesn't support as many institutions or cards as Apple Pay. However, iOS is no saint. Anyways, for the next eight months, this will be my setup. Lots of videos to come regarding my experience, so stay tuned. I'll leave it at that. Tip and trick videos from other fellow YouTubers in the description. Take care fam. Talk soon. Peace.